Greetings. Today we're going to talk about how a violent encounter between a bear and an owlbear could possibly end up. Welcome back to World of Monsters. I purposely titled this video with bear and owlbear as they could certainly be more specified by the lore master. In Dungeons and Dragons, the owlbear was a single species. Well, for the most part, or time, of the game's existence. Okay, there have been later additions such as the Arctic Owlbear and the Winged Owlbear, Owlbear Skeleton, Winter Claw Owlbear, Wind Claw Owlbear, and that's just in D&D, excluding similar games and companion bestiaries. Nonetheless, we can take a quick look at how such a fight would transpire in that universe as well, but first, let's get a better grasp at what we're actually getting ourselves into here. Overall, in my opinion, when comparing monsters to animals, monsters will be more extreme. They will possess a higher energetic intensity that we do not see in real creatures unlike movies tend to portray. But there are of course those rare cases when an animal may act extraordinarily aggressive and attentive toward an opponent or prey item. Although again, this won't last long due to the energetic and overall power requirement. With monsters, on the other hand, artists, animators, etc. take advantage of the fantastical actuality and more often than not portray them with that extreme level of power. I myself have been guilty of this as a strapping young black-eyed biased monster lover. Played with my figures always giving the strength advantage to the goblin, or whatever it may have been. I mean, it just made sense. These monsters grew up, well, in my world, were raised for battle. They were feral, unlike the domesticated humans that created a norm of comfort wherever they could manage. Another such act of favoritism of mine is making the monster larger. Therefore, if you were to throw an owlbear and a bear at me, almost automatically in my mind, the owlbear would be naturally bigger. However, these are just generalities, an observation over what movies and games put into action for us, and maybe not just a personal desire for something something of another level. As is the nature of matches, it is therefore important to balance this out. We have knowledge of the various bear species, which are surprisingly not that many, and of course, it makes sense that the teddy bear shaped digit would represent these animals. Eight is enough to offer our owl bears some variation. Since D&D didn't initially specify the bear portion genetic composition of the owlbear, we can find our own similarities and create our own variations. Henceforth, an owl panda or an owl polar bear. We can even change up the counterpart and explore more combinations featuring various raptors, producing monstrous gems such as eagle bears, or more specifically, red-tailed hawk sloth bears. At this point, why stay so grounded? We might as well create bird-bear combinations that don't resemble any of those on Earth. So yes, we could have lots of fun monster mashing, but this isn't an owl bear all about video, although you could always stay tuned for that. So we leave these mental fiddle-faddles to our monster art contests and work up a proper matchup here. First, the D&D's version, since D&D is where the creature's mysterious lore originated from. Here within, the owlbear's size range is described as being akin to a brown or polar bear. Going for the heavyweights will materialize a 1500 pound or 680 kilogram classic owlbear with an equally heavy polar bear. Note, a dire polar bear such as in Pathfinder could get even larger and significantly more powerful. Comparing stats, the owlbear has just slightly better armor and overall higher hit points or amount of health. Also, the owlbear is a little more nimble, intelligent, and tough. In short, they both move at the same speed, have the same strength as well as charisma. The polar bear, on the other hand, outclasses the owlbear in wisdom, but only by a single point. Overall, the owlbear has a higher challenge rating and awards an experience amount of 700, whereas the polar bear awards 450. Skill-wise, the owlbear has keen smell and sight. The polar bear only has keen smell. The perceptions are the same, although the owlbear has dark vision in addition. Their attack types are similar, claw and mouth slash beak, with which both the owlbear does just a little more damage. Here we can conclude that the owlbear has a better build, not by much, but in areas that count. Consumed in that aggression it is well known for, in longer battles it should usually come out victorious. Although in reality, the numbers are so close that the fight could easily go either way. The foundation D&D provided us with of calculable stats is actually quite solid here. In my attempt at a more balanced and realistic matchup though, I'm going brunette. I'll pose a 1200 pound North American male brown bear or grizzly against an owlbear of equal size and similar features. 
First off, if correctly anatomically purposeful and functioning, that is if this is a naturally occurring creature, not a manipulation by another species, such as what many dog breeds are, therefore not having odd physiological issues, then the owlbear's vision should be much better than that of the bear's, rather than just being that way for an aesthetic appeal. Aside from the bird's head, we don't know for certain what other anatomical differences there are to the monster. Are the bones lighter, for instance? Is the body covered by both fur and feather? Let's say that if this is a natural product of mother nature and adaptation, then we can trust that she herself best positioned the fur and feather for the creature's survival. Maybe thicker feathers around the neck, creating a protective mane. I could certainly see feathers adding some more value to the defensive covering of an owlbear, especially if both of these beasts were of the same biome, hence probably sharing similarities with both skin and fat thickness levels. Onto the offensive perks. We have not just a beak versus mob, but a toothed beak at least in most versions. Comparing this to the crunch power we know of large turtles and raptors, we could hypothesize that it would outpower that of the grizzlies. With the addition of the teeth, it would also retain the grip and even add more rip ability. Yes, overall this beak would seem more treacherous, although that still depends on its size. Going off of most depictions or average there within, it would appear that a bear's jaws can engulf a larger surface area, especially upon another thickly fur and feather covered beast. Where Upon in face on face combat, the owlbear would have the advantage of more easily finding soft flesh. To puncture. Much of the concept art out there presents us with owlbear claws that somewhat exceed the size of a real bear's. Considering talon growths on birds, particularly those of prey, that would be a fair judgment here. Overall analyzing the observable data we have, if these two creatures were to be the same in weight and even length, the owlbear would most likely have a speed and or more explosive attack advantage. Weighing in that the owlbear presumably climbs trees more often than a brown bear to utilize its superior far side higher agility would be a natural necessity. Therefore, if these two plump beasts were to go head to head, say because of territorial reasons, the fight could once again go either way, taking to mind the intricacies that actually go into a fight. Mood, health, luck, experience of the individual, etc. Not to mention the demeanor to one another these creatures would have. Brown bears of North America in our reality are apex predators. When faced with an alternative predatory species of large size, they won't bother exerting too much energy and know that usually if they back down, they won't be sought after. Hence in our world, serious bear battles mostly take place amongst their own kind. In this world, however, bears would have this other threat, the owlbear, and not to mention other possibly larger ones. Therefore, these bears of the fantasy realm would have adapted to most likely not being at the top of the food chain and thus have evolved to exhibit harsher habits for when dealing with other large creatures, or a faster gallop to retreat from said threat. I'll be honest, from when this matchup first dropped into the hungry caverns of my mind, I was partial to the monster, the owlbear, naturally, for the love of monsters. But after exploring not just their differences, as they would be if owlbears came into our current reality, but also what the differences would be between our realm and a hypothetical one that frankly would probably house far deadlier creatures than ours, and how that fact would impact our contestants, especially the bear. I could now see the grizzly bear being equally aggressive, though clumsier, but more experienced in dealing with a similarly structured foe, as they would have had experience dealing with other bears. I don't say this for the owlbear, as I'm thinking they'd be more solitary type creatures, even more so than bears, that is. I'd imagine the owlbear's fighting style to be brief. It would be wise in quickly assessing the danger level and disengaging if a clear victory were not foreseen to conserve its energy and move on, and in probably a brisker fashion than the bear, leading the bear on a very short-lived chase, as it as well would prefer to save its energy for its more easily obtainable common food sources. This conflicts with D&D's perspective of the owlbear being largely known as being dumb and ruthless extremely aggressive. Though the owlbear is a creation of this beloved universe, I still say to each their own lore. Bearing in mind a somewhat sprightlier owlbear with more stamina, I could also see the owlbear toying with the bear before leaving it unnecessarily exhausted. In this case, a lighter, quicker owlbear could still be a fair opponent, and one of equal size, not only still faster than the bear, but physically stronger, could be unfair. With these final thoughts, there is one more thing to ponder. The grizzly is omnivorous. The owlbear is... carnivorous. 
It is more practiced in the hunt than the bear, but not necessarily with the larger prey. Subduing the life of a deer with relatively small mouth parts is not a swift act. But then again, your owlbear may just have an unusually large beak comparatively to the owl head. I could certainly see the owlbear being a predator to a large variety of small animals, which again proposes that against a larger foe, its best battle features would be the truly intimidating talons slash claws, possible superior musculature, and natural armor. The beak, of course, would really be dependent on the opponent, as I'm sure it would come in specifically handy against certain monster types. The bears probably wouldn't be one of them. I rest my case that the fight could end a draw, with the deciding factor being composed of the complexities of the individual. But in my world, there's a good chance the owlbear would be larger or much better built, giving it the upper claw. In reality, as often observed during meetups of different yet similarly powered creatures of same feeding disposition, survival is priority. Hence, two different carnivores or herbivores are very rarely sighted in combat lasting more than a couple of minutes. The wilderness is unpredictable. Energy conservation and cutting off downtime between the next meal or finding the next meal is essential. Humans of course tried and still try to antagonize such behavior within jarred arenas to enormous amphitheaters for their own entertainment, but it was and is often unsuccessful. Wild animals are just not us. They're not monsters, after all. Respecting one another's strengths, I'm sure the grizzly bear and the owlbear would simply separate before any bloodshed were to take place, following the laws of the jungle or forest. So what say you, curious one? How would this pan out in your world? I'm sure we can agree on one thing. This would be a sight to behold. I have been and I am Monster Master Arthur. Let's continue this down below and move onward to the next charming monster topic.